Hello, my name is Tom DuPont. I'm with CodeSmith Tools, and today I'm going to be going over how to create master templates and sub-templates. Master templates are where you have one CodeSmith Tools template that can call other CodeSmith Tools templates and generate their output. This is very useful because we can use it to create some very dynamic and very well-controlled and structured output. So to demo this, I'm going to be using our CodeSmith Tools pet shop database, and I'm going to be generating business entities for that. Uh, this is a good example because we can have one master template that's going to call a business entity template and generate a whole database worth of files. So let's get started by looking at something we might want to generate. Now, I already have Visual Studio open, and this is using our product tables example. So for each of our tables, we're going to want to create a public partial class that's going to have the table name as the class name, and we're going to want to have a list of properties that matches up with its columns and their data types. So keeping something this simple in mind, let's hop over to Codesmith Studio and create a business entity template. Now, I'm very going to quickly add a folder shortcut just so I can get to the templates quicker and easier down the line. Okay, so let's go ahead and add our new C-sharp template. Let's call it Business Entity. Now, just to save a little time, because this is a pretty simple template and it's not really the focus of the video, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste that in. So, looking at what I've done here, we have two properties. We have a source table, which is a schema explorer dot table schema, and we have a namespace, which is a string. And we've imported our schema explorer assembly and imported the schema explorer namespace. So we have our class, and it's going to have the namespace of what we pass in. It's going to have a class name of the source table dot name, and then for each column in that source table, we're going to loop through and create a public of its system type with its column name, and then a get and set accessor. So again, this is pretty simple. Now, it's not necessarily the safest way of doing this. Uh, we're not checking for keywords, we're not checking for capitalization, but it's simple, and um, for this demo, it will definitely work. So very quickly before we move on, let's go ahead and test this, make sure it's working. Build succeeded. Let's give it a namespace. Test namespace. Select our source table. Now I'm going to go ahead and select our pet shop database. And let's do the product table again. So, let's build. Okay, and you'll notice this is very similar to what we just looked at here. We've got the partial class product with its five properties, which matches this. So, I think we're good. So let's get into the meat of the video. Let's create our master template. I'm going to come here, create another new C Sharp template. I'm going to call mine master. So first things first, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Okay, so once again to save a little time, I'm going to copy and paste a few things in. First of all, our properties. You notice we have our source database. We're going to have a Scheme Explorer dot database schema. We're going to have our namespace, which is again a string. And this time we're also going to have a results folder, which is a string. And that is because we want to um, put all of our output into one folder when we generate this, because we don't want to bombard our project with a slew of new files. So also, we are once again going to need our schema explorer assembly name. But also, we're going to need our an, to import a new namespace. We're going to need to import system.io, because we're going to be doing file manipulation. So here is where we're finally going to call our sub-template. We have to create a new register, and we're going to call this business entity. This template is going to be business entity dot CST. Now I'm going to remove the other properties here. We don't want to worry about merging right now, and we're going to use all our properties. So every time you want to include a new sub-template and a master template, you must add a register like that. But it's pretty simple. That is to say it's simple when you spell it right. So now we want to distinguish that this is actually a master template. And there's two things we need to do to do that. First of all, we have to come up here and add a new property called output type. We want to set that to none, because we want this template to generate no output other than its sub-template's output. Next, we have to do an override of our render method, which takes in a text writer. 
Because when this renders, we don't want it to just render like normal, because we've already specified it's not going to put anything out, but we want to control what it's going to do when it runs, which in this case is we want it to execute our sub-templates. So once again, I'm going to copy in some stuff here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check if our results folder doesn't exist, and if it doesn't, then we're going to create it. And this is because we're using system.io, we can just access directory. And then our logic is going to be that for every table in our source database, we want to run through it, and for each, we want to create a business entity um, file. So now let's create our business entity method, create a public void. And we want to take in a table schema. Now, every time you call this register up here, you are creating a class of that template. So we want to create an object of that. To instantiate that, you're going to call this.create and pass in the generic type you want. In this case, we want the business entity. Now, we need to set the properties from that template. So to do that, it's as easy as setting properties on the object, which we had two. We had source table we're going to set equal to table. And we had a namespace, which we're going to set equal to namespace. So next, we want to create the file name for the file we're going to generate. So I'm going to create a string to hold that. I'm going to do string.format. And I want to include the folder. And then I want the actual file name. So we're going to get that by doing results folder, the property for the template, and then table.name. Now again, this isn't always the safest thing to do, um, just passing in strings to do folder names or doing table.name. But again, we're just trying to keep it simple. So now we need to create an output file object. And output file comes from the CodeSmith engine. It is a pretty useful class which we'll talk a little more about later. And it takes in the parameter of the file name you want. So last but not least, we want to uh, render our business entity to a file. So business entity dot render to file. And it's going to need a path, or in this case, we're going to pass in the output file, which has our path in it. And then it also takes in a Boolean for whether or not you want to overwrite the file when it comes across it. So in this case, we're going to do true. Now, you can do more complicated things here, such as uh, merge strategies and other things. But in this case, we're going to regenerate this file every time. So if it finds it, we want it to overwrite it. So yeah, that should do it. Um, so a quick recap. We're registering our sub-template as a business entity. Then we are checking if our output directory exists. If not, we're creating it. And then we're going to loop through our database. And for each table, we're going to create a sub-template and render it to a file. So let's see if this builds. Yep, build succeeded. So then let's go ahead and run it. So let's do test namespace again. And we'll leave the folder called results. We need to select our source database, which once again, I'm going to do pet shop. And let's run. So you'll notice that nothing has rendered here, which is a good thing because we set our master's output type to none. But if we go and look at our file structure, you'll notice that sure enough, we have a results folder, and in it is one file for every table in the database. So if we open up our product class here, we have our product class with its five properties, which matches the example output we wanted. So it is that easy to use one master template to call subtemplates to generate multiple files. So now I want to take a few minutes to show you some additional features with our Visual Studio integration. Specifically right now, I want to show you how to create a dependent file. Now a dependent file is where one file will hide behind another in Visual Studio. And this is a very common thing to do with our CodeSmith templates because people like to have a dot generated file that is hidden that will get regenerated every time and leave the front file to have custom content from the user. So the first thing we're going to need to do is add an additional template. So we're going to add another C-sharp template, and I'm going to call this editable entity. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy over our business entity right into it. 
because they're going to be basically the same, only in this one we're just going to put a comment that says your content here. So let's hop back over to our master and update it to use the new template we've created. So we have to create a new register for editable entity. And then we're going to need to create a new method for create editable entity. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy that in. But you notice this is actually very similar to our create business entity method. It uh, creates the editable entity by using the this.create. It sets the properties, creates an output file, and renders it to a file. The difference really here is that we're going to create the file name first and then see if it exists. And if it doesn't, then we're going to create it the way we would otherwise. But if it does, we don't want to create it because we want to leave it alone and leave it with the user's custom content uh, intact. And then the other difference is that it's returning a string because we need to be able to tell the create business entity method what file it's going to be dependent upon. So let's add a parameter for that. Dependent upon. Next, we need to update this file name, generate.cs. And then we need to actually set the dependent upon. So we're going to update the output file to use dot dependent upon equals. And notice we have to get the full path of the dependent upon file when setting that to the dependent upon property, which of course is very easy because we're using system.io. Now, I had said that uh, this output file class was very useful, and this is one example of what else it can do. But also, I just want to show you this real quick. You can add things like metadata to this output file. And in this case, adding a build action and adding a different index will set the actual file's build method in uh, Visual Studio. So in this case, setting it to 3 could set it to um, embedded resource as opposed to compile. But it's different for every virtual version of Visual Studio. So while tricky, this is very neat, very convenient with a lot of customization and flexibility. So with these two methods updated, all we need to do is come up here and update our render method to use our new create editable entity method and get our dependent file name out of it and pass it into the create business entity. So if we compile this real quick, build failed, dependent upon does not exist. And that's because I had a typo. So save that and compile it again, and we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and run this. Let's go to our Visual Studio, add new item. Smith project. I'm just going to go ahead and call it master. And we need to add an output. Let's locate our master template. And notice that we only need one output. We just need the master. It'll take care of the sub templates. So namespace, just to stay consistent with the project, we'll do master templates dot results. Fold name results. And our pet shop database. Let's generate. And now we have our results folder with all of our files inside of it. Notice we have two files for each table. We have product, and it's dependent upon version product.generated, which contains all of our um, primitives. So let's try to add some custom content to this. And let's also, for the sake of example, add it to the .generated file. Save them both. And regenerate. Notice that the .generated did indeed regenerate, but the product itself was left intact. And so that concludes our video. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you have any questions, comments, or recommendations for future videos, please visit us at community.codesmithtools.com. My name is Tom DuPont, and thank you very much for using Codesmith.